And finally this week is Yes Man, the new Jim Carrey vehicle. And uh, much like Liar Liar, I mean, it's not exactly the same as Liar Liar, but it has the same kind of feel. Uh, Jim Carrey plays a guy who says no to life because he uh, had, was divorced a number of years back from uh, this wife, from his wife, and, and, and basically since then has become a recluse. Mm -hmm. He doesn't hang out with his friends. He makes excuses, and he watches 300 at home on DVD instead of, <laughs> instead of interacting with people. And he meets up with this guy that used to work in the bank with him, uh, played by Michael or John Michael Higgins, and he has fallen in with this basically a yes cult, and mm -hmm. it's, it's led by Terrence Stamp, who's very funny in the movie, kind of scary, but yeah. but still pretty funny. And and basically the foundation of the of this whole seminar uh, or cult uh, is that when a, an opportunity presents itself, you say yes to it, you embrace the new experience. So no matter what it is, yeah, without question, r regardless of whether it makes good sense to do it or not. Uh, but so Jim Carrey is basically uh, guilted into it. <laughs> the, that scene, is, the scene is pretty funny where Terrence Stamp confronts <laughs> him about how he's so disinter disinterested in life that he can't even bring himself to masturbate. Uh, so he, he agrees to do this. Uh, and, he, you know, f for a while things go pretty well. He meets mm -hmm. a girl and, uh, and I guess a promotion at work and makes some new friends and everything. And, and as you might imagine... At some point, he starts saying yes to the wrong things, and it starts to his life starts to unravel. And you know, I mean, it, the movie is completely by the numbers in terms of the plot. You'll see, like the conflict that occurs later on with the girl, of course, is going to happen. Yeah. But you know, it was funny enough. It's not uh, it's not Jim Carrey's best work, but it was funny. So. No, it, it, it was funny. You know, one of the things that I did like about this that kind of you know took it kind of outside the realm of this the normal. Um, the normal footsteps of these films is that he he never did anything out of you know maliciousness you know the things that he did his, more, were, his friends were malicious malicious more than anything yeah, the like things that they were having him do yeah. <laughs> but you know he he was trying to experience new things and uh, you know where where everything starts to kind of unravel you know it, it's all very coincidental things that uh, are put together that end up. Uh, bringing this rift between him and uh, Zoe Deschanel's character, um, but you know, and it's one of the, it's a, it's the thing that drives me nuts about romantic comedies is there's always in the middle of the second act there's always this conflict, and it's the sort of conflict that if they sat down and just yeah. talked for a few minutes, like this is what was going on, then the problem would go away. But it never does. They yeah. have to, you know, it always has to be this big production. And yeah. this movie is the same way, but yeah. But I mean, this this was a lot more enjoyable than uh, a lot of romantic comedies. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's not going to stand out from the crowd, but it was funny enough. Yeah. And I enjoyed it more than yeah, most. I well, I enjoyed it more than I expected to, and yeah, I, maybe that's high enough praise. So I, I say check it out. I agree. We'll be right back with our summary.